Today on our 2015 Ram 2500, we'll be reviewing and installing the Kurt Custom 5th Wheel Install Kit, part number C16427-204. Now while it's not totally required, to make it easier to do the install, if your vehicle is equipped with a spare tire, we recommend to go ahead and lower and remove it. Now to begin our install, we first need to locate the forward attachment points for our front brackets. These are weld nuts built into the frame by the manufacturer. Now over time, these weld nuts are gonna build up rust, dust, dirt, and debris. So we're gonna spray each one with a spray lubricant and then use our half inch nylon tube brush, part number 814092, to thoroughly clean out the threads. Then I recommend to take one of the new 12 millimeter bolts and thread it into the weld nuts to make sure they're gonna go nice and easily. Now we know that we got both weld nuts cleaned out. Let's go ahead and take a look at our attachment hardware. For the rear fastener, it'll be a 12 millimeter bolt, but it's the shorter bolt as our longer 12 millimeter bolt will go in the forward attachment point. Each of these bolts will get a conical tooth washer. The teeth of the washer will face the bracket as it will go onto our bolt, through the bracket, and into the weld nut. Here's what our forward bracket's gonna look like. The one for the driver's side is similar, only faces the other direction. Now, we can put the bracket up in place, lining up the two pre-drilled holes with our attachment points in the frame. Note, for our forward attachment point, because of the indentation in the frame, we're gonna add a spacer block that'll get sandwiched between the bracket and the frame. Let's go ahead and install our hardware to secure the bracket. Let's start with the rear fastener first. And I'm just gonna install the fastener's finger tight at this time. We'll take our block, slide it between the bracket and the frame, holding it in place while we install the longer 12 millimeter bolt. Now before I snug up my hardware to hold the bracket in place, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the bracket is slid all the way back to the hat channel towards the rear of the vehicle. This will help to ensure that when we tighten down both front brackets that they will be even with each other being tight to the hat channel. Now once I've got it pushed back, I'm just going to go ahead and snug it up to hold it in place. The reason we tighten it down to hold it in place is because we'll use the pre-drilled holes in the top of the bracket as our attachment points for our forward cross rail. Now with the passenger side done, we need to move over to the driver's side and repeat the same process. The only exception is we'll need to relocate the manufacturer's wiring and connectors here on the inner frame rail. We're just gonna go ahead and pop them free at this time using a flat blade screwdriver or an interior trim panel tool so we can remove the push pin fasteners and gain some movement from our wiring and connectors. There, now we have plenty of room to get our bracket in place. Now with our brackets in place, using a center punch, we're gonna mark the hole. All right, now we're moving into the pickup bed, taking our cross rail, setting it in place over top our attachment points. Now once you have the rail in place, you look down through the attachment points on the rail to make sure they line up with the center punches that we marked just see a little dimple coming up from the bottom of the truck to show our center punches. Now that we've verified our four attachment points, we'll go ahead and move the rail out of the way, move underneath the truck, 
and remove the side brackets and drill out our holes. Quick tech tip, if you go ahead and drill out your eighth inch pilot hole from the marks that we made with our center punch, then remove the bracket, it can make it easier to identify. Then once I have my pilot hole drilled out, I'll go ahead and remove the side bracket. Now we'll go ahead and use our step bit process. We'll continue enlarging our drill bit size till we get up to our final size as per the instructions. Alright, now with the holes drilled out through the pickup bed, we can go ahead and put the bracket back in place. Now with the forward brackets back installed, our holes drilled out, we're ready to put our hardware in place to secure the front rail. We'll be using the half inch carriage bolt and spacer block spacer block will go around the pre-drilled holes and the carriage bolt will go down through the rail. Then it'll go through the pickup bed, the bracket, and underneath we'll secure it with a half inch flange nut. Our U-shaped spacer blocks are put in place so that when we tighten down the rail it doesn't crush the bed corrugation. Now we'll go over to the driver's side and repeat the same process. We need to install the fasteners. That's going to be a half inch spacer block and you'll notice the offset hole is about the center of our spacer block. So it'll fit over the bolt and then we'll install our flange nut. Now for our rear attachment point, you'll notice that our hole in our block is offset. That'll allow it to get around the hat channel and still go over the bolt and into position. Once we have the block on, we'll install our flange nut. Now with our front brackets, rail, and hardware installed, we need to set the rear rail. We're gonna go ahead and set it in the approximate position and then use our fifth wheel assembly to guide it into place. Now that we're using our fifth wheel assembly to set the rear rail, we're going to go ahead and measure from the wheel well over to the edge of the rail and make sure it's even on both sides. To double check ourselves, we can even go to our front rail and make sure it's of equal distance from the edge of the wheel well over to the edge of the rail. Now once we've verified that and we know our Rear rail is square with the front rail by using our assembly and centered in the pickup bed by measuring. We can go ahead and drill out an eighth inch hole in row one on our rear rail. We'll now go ahead and take our eighth inch drill bit, find the center of our attachment point and drill down through the pickup bed. We'll go ahead and do this on both sides. Now with the row one pre-drilled, we can see our pilot hole here at the bottom of the pickup bed. So in order to get our bracket in place, we've got the manufacturer's wire that runs through here. We're going to go ahead and pull the fasteners out that secure it to the frame. Then bring in the driver's side bracket. Line it up with our frame attachment points just like on our front brackets, and make sure it lines up with our pre-drilled hole. All right, now with the driver's side bracket held up to the frame and our attachment points, we know they line up. We'll go ahead and check the passenger side. Here on the passenger side, we'll first need to remove the heat shield that went around the spare tire. There's a total of four fasteners, two here on the frame and two on the cross tube. Once we move this out of the way, it'll make it easier to get to our attachment points for the rear bracket on the passenger side.
Now here on the passenger side, our bracket's a little smaller. And we'll sit in position, lining up with our attachment points and our pre-drilled hole. Now once we verify that our brackets line up with our pre-drilled holes, we'll go ahead and take the fifth wheel assembly out of the way. Now we need to go ahead and drill out our pilot hole for the second row. Note, I do like to go ahead and stand on the rail to help hold it in position while we drill out these pilot holes. Find the center of our attachment point and use our eighth inch bit. Now once we have all four pilot holes drilled, we'll go ahead and move the rail out of our way and use our step bit process again to drill them out to our final size. Now once we have our holes enlarged in here in the pickup bed, we need to drill down through the hat channel so that we can get our tube spacers in. Here on the passenger side, we're just going to take the same final size as our pickup bed and go all the way down through the hat channel. On the driver's side, we'll also drill down through the hat channel, but then we'll move underneath and enlarge the hat channel enough that we can put the tube spacer up through the hat channel and then drop our carriage bolt down through the rail and through the tube spacer. Now here on the bottom side of the vehicle, we've got our hole pre-drilled. We're gonna go ahead and use a 7 8 bit to open up large enough to get our tube spacer into position. Now we'll only drill the enlarged hole through the hat channel, not through the pickup bed. Now with our hole drilled out here on the driver's side, we'll go ahead and put our bracket in place. Just like for our forward attachment points, we sprayed down the well nuts and then used our tube brush, clean out the holes. Now with our hole drilled out, we're ready to install the bracket. I'll go ahead and get my bracket into position, put the tube spacer, up through our pre-drilled hole. Get our bracket lined up here with our attachment points and install our hardware. We'll use the same hardware that we did for the rear attachment point on the front bracket. 12 millimeter bolt and half inch copper tooth washer. We'll just install our fastener's finger tight this time. Now on the passenger side, to get our tube spacer into the hat channel, we cannot drill it from the bottom as the frame is in the way. So we'll need to feed the spacer into the hat channel, then line it up with our attachment point. We use the magnet to feed it in to the channel, got a hold of it with our screwdriver, tilted it up into position, and then lined it up with our pry bar. Now here on the passenger side, we can set our bracket into place. We're just gonna use the same 12 millimeter bolt and conical tooth washer as we did on the driver's side. And threads into the weld nuts in the frame. Now with both brackets in place, let's move back to the pickup bed. Now for our rear rail, our forward carriage bolt is gonna be the long carriage bolt that'll go down through the bed, through the tube spacer, and then through the hat channel where we'll then install some fasteners underneath. And for the row number one, with the very rear edge of our rear rail, it's gonna get a half inch carriage bolt going through the hat channel, then through the pickup bed, and then the bracket. Keep in mind that these carriage bolts are the same on both sides. Now with the rail in place, we're gonna go ahead and slide our U-shaped spacer under row number one, and then drop in my carriage bolt. And then here on row number two, we'll take the long carriage bolt, sending it down through the bed, through the tube spacer, and the hat channel. Now with our carriage bolt in place, we'll move underneath and install our hardware. Starting here on the passenger side, we're gonna take our block, slide it onto the carriage bolt, and then thread on our half inch flange nut. Note, if you put a little side pressure on your block, it can help to get the nut started without pushing your carriage bolt back up through the pickup bed. Now 
Now with the hardware and rails in place, we're gonna go ahead and set our fifth wheel back onto our rails and then start tightening down our hardware. We'll start with tightening down the fasteners that secure our cross rails to the bracket. Now that the rail to bracket fasteners tightened down, we'll go ahead and tighten down the bracket to frame fasteners. Now with all the hardware tightened down, we'll go ahead and torque the specifications as indicated in instructions. Now we know our rails are good and tight, we're going to go ahead and take our attachment out and set it aside. Next, we're going to install the center rail attachment point. On both the front and rear rail, it's going to get a carriage bolt going down through the rail and through the pickup bed and then some fasteners underneath. We're going to install this on row one and four, so the closest to the cab of the truck and the closest to the tailgate. To start, we're going to go ahead and drill out a pilot hole and then we'll open up to the half inch size that's just large enough for our carriage bolt. Now with our hole drilled out, we'll go ahead and take the U-shaped spacer and put it into position, just like we did for our other attachment points there in the bottom of the bed corrugation. Then we'll take our carriage bolt and drop it down through the rail. I'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the front rail or the rail and row closest to the cab. Now the carriage bolt in place, we'll go ahead and move underneath, install the block and a flange nut to secure each carriage bolt. Now, once our block and flange nuts are in place, we'll go ahead and tighten them down. Once they're tightened down, we can go ahead and torque the specifications as indicated instructions. All right, now with our fifth wheel rails, installed and secured, we'll go ahead and reinstall our heat shield and secure any wiring or anything else underneath. Now that our install is complete, we're ready to hit the road. And that'll do it for the install of our Kirk Custom 5th Wheel Install Kit, part number C16427-204 on our 2015 Ram 2500. Click the link below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com.